Okay, happy Friday rolling out. This is Crystal Jordan with another special edition reality check. You guys know how we do every Monday and occasionally on Fridays, but today we have a great conversation and we're just going to have some good, some good uh, reality TV tea. And trust me, tonight's guest has all the tea. He is, I think he is just like, um, he has the anatomy of reality TV down to a science. And I cannot wait to pick his brain tonight. So please help me welcome tonight's guest for Reality Check, the one and only Carlos King. <laughs> oh, you sang. Yes. Hello. Hey, Carlos. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you again, as always. Good to see you. Oh, my God. So but the last time we talked, we were talking about uh, the fact that you had the fact that love and marriage Huntsville is continues to like break records. And then you introduce DC, which has gotten off to a crazy start. And then we just, you know, we added a nightcap <laughs> we added yeah. a nightcap to talk about everything, uh, all things, Carlos King and all things reality. So first of all, let's just start out by saying congratulations on Carlos, you, you, the nightcap with Carlos King and Love and Marriage DC, the Love and Marriage DC, and of course, another, you know, ball busting season <laughs> of Love and Marriage Huntsville. You have got to be on a career high right now. I really am. I really am. I don't drink, smoke, or do none of those things. My <laughs> career is my natural high. Mm -hmm. And you're right, Crystal, it's because I love what I do. And I really take pride and pleasure in making sure that my shows resonate with an audience like yourself who are just fans of watching real people live these lives and just be so real and authentic. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's been a joy. And then on top of that, to have a late night show on the Oprah Winfrey Network has been a dream. Yeah. So again, it's my love letter to my reality fans who are able to just come here and really get a taste of black culture, pop culture, and just have fun watching us talk about all of their favorite reality shows. Well, you are definitely doing that. But like I said, when I introduce you, I think you have figured out the science of reality TV and what works, especially when it comes to your core audience. You know how to pick casts that are able to really give us great storylines, but also really connect with their demographics. So what is that Carlos King formula that keeps us glued to our seats, but also really keeps us like we're vested, we're invested in these, these people's lives. Like we want them to win. We want to see them grow. Yeah, no, great question. You know what it is, Crystal, is the fact that I'm really good at casting. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, a show is only successful if it's cast as someone that an audience wants to watch, you know? Um, so I really make sure that I bring people to the forefront who I think have interesting stories. So when you look at Love and Marriage Huntsville and you have Melody and Martell and these regular people from Huntsville, Alabama, and to be able to resonate with them and to see something about them that you can relate to is, is, is the gift that I think I have and to make sure that I extract the truth from them so that they're able to be honest in front of the camera. And then of course, reap the benefits of, of course, um, being a part of a successful show. So mm -hmm. doing that with the Love & Marriage franchise and, you know, we announced that Bell Collective is coming back. Yes, for I'm so today. Back. Congratulations again. It's just blessings on top of blessings. Yes. On top of blessings. Amen to that. So again, these boss women in Jackson, Mississippi, yes. who are entrepreneurs and they're self-made. And the fact that we're giving them a platform to be inspired mm -hmm. by other Black women. But to also see that it's not easy being um, the breadwinner in your household or or to be so successful as a woman that sometimes it does interfere in your personal life. So this season, we're diving more into their relationships okay. with their husbands and their boyfriends and there's some scandals going on in Jackson, child. It was, it, it, trust me, lad, the first season, there was some issues but the reality is, and I, you know, I was talking with a friend about this earlier today. 
when you see, uh, especially with women, you see a woman that's, you know, ambitious and climbing the ladder of success, there's going to be some, you know, there's going to be some areas where she's not, you know, successful. I, I, you know, Shonda Rhimes did this amazing conversation and she said, you know, if I'm, you know, if I have a show, I'm getting awards for this, you know, probably there, you know, the kids, I may not have been able to be at parent teacher conference. There's going to be some, some balance. So how do you find that sweet spot for your cast members? And then also how do we encourage the audience to have a little grace? Cause you know, your audience is real specific about what they want. They <laughs> and they love to let me know that. <laughs> I, I know, but, but so, so let's look at someone like a destiny. Let's do a case study here. Right. So yeah, you have destiny that joined love and marriage Huntsville. Now that cast, was very specific. We had the Scots and we had the Holtz. So you introduce someone else and the, we're just like, wait a minute. Uh-uh, uh-uh. So, <laughs> so how do you know for someone like Destiny and then later, I think Tiffany, like how do you know what will work or do you ever think, well, this may not work. I may need to pull this, pull this person from the lineup because it's not really working. We know some other series they got like one season to make things pop. And if you don't pop, you're going to get, you're not going to get that peach, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you know who is going to, how do you know if the audience is really giving you a lot of flack for someone, if that person really is going to work with this cast and you're really going to get the best from them? And we use <laughs> Destiny as a beginner, a starter for that. Yeah, the beautiful thing about the Love and Marriage franchise, and we'll just start with Huntsville since you brought up Destiny, is... Unlike other reality shows, I don't cast people for a moment. Mm. I don't cast people who come off the woodworks and they have no connection to the to the cast. Mm -hmm. The beauty of Destiny is she and Martell went to school together. Mm -hmm. Destiny and Melody were friends because of her husband LeBaric and Martell also being friends. So that's mm -hmm. how. Melody was able to meet Destiny. So it was organic in that sense. Um, so that's why it works when I introduce people because I don't just do a big open call like, if you want to join Love and Match Huntsville, <laughs> sign up on the data line. No, you have to already be a part of someone's life. Um, and you see that with Stormy this season. You see that with Tiffany Whitlow. It's always people who have history with somebody on the show. Keep your right. Kiki, what is go Kiki, the co cousin, Tisha's cousin? <laughs> you got Kiki acting up. <laughs> yes, Kiki is everything. I love you some Kiki, honey. So again, it's, you know what it is, Crystal? I never want my audience to get comfortable. Okay. Because this is the thing. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So if I had the same cast for four years, the audience would be like, oh my God, they talk about the same stuff. Yeah. I'm over it. I'm bored. There's nothing new happening. That's so true. then we, we gave you Destiny and we saw what happened with that. And they hated Destiny her first season. No I one, I no one liked Destiny. Now they like her. Then we had Tiffany. No one liked Tiffany. No. They said, girl, bye. I was concerned. I was concerned, Carla. I was like, if she ain't going to make it because it kept getting progressively worse. <laughs> And the audience, even now, I'm still looking at Tiffany with the side eye, like, girl, is you going to work? Yeah, so we'll, again, we'll see. And then we have Stormy. And people okay. are like, uh uh, Carlo, this ain't love and hip hop. Just Stormy. Oh. And then we have Kiki. It was the, 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 the beautiful thing about Kiki's addition to the show is she is literally Tisha's first cousin, blood related. Like, Cousin, 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 they right? Look alike. They 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 low key look alike. Like you see yeah. the resemblance all up through Miss Wanda Ms. and Ms. Wanda, right? <laughs> yes, the lineage is definitely the that in the DNA, honey. Yes. So, yeah. So who knew that these cousins had this issue? And it wasn't until she came to the pajama party that Melody um threw, and we were like, uh oh, what's going on with Kiki? <laughs> and then it was like Let's see more Kiki. And then the audience, which is funny, they love some Kiki. <laughs> they are shocked because you know what? It's the fact that, and that's what I think is 
it is the genius that is the way you do things, right? Because you are able somehow to get people to share things in an authentic way that is true to their, because there are a lot of other shows and we're not naming any other names, but they're, they're, the storylines are created and then you see people not really, it doesn't feel authentic because it goes away a couple episodes, but these are long standing relationships. Like you just said, where there is history, but you got cousins talking about, I mean, this is, they're airing out family business with the own network. Yeah. That's shocking. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, 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 but you know what it is too, Crystal? It's so relatable. Like, I, I feel like everybody has that one family member, whether it's a sibling, a cousin, you know, or your father's other kids. <laughs> <laughs> There's always some family drama. Yes. Like I have, unfortunately, family drama. <laughs> I'm not even exempt. Right. I'm Carlos King, and I always deal with like, so-and-so said this about you, so-and-so said that about you. It's so relatable. So when I watch Kiki and Tisha, I can relate to it. I can relate to this push and pull relationship. And I knew that if I was able to bring this to the forefront, my hope, honestly, and this is no BS, my hope is that they can heal yeah. and find their way back to each other. And I, listen, I strongly believe they will, mm -hmm. um, but I give Tisha all the props in the world, seriously, for being able to say, you know what, let's talk about it. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about this cast. They, they show up and show out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you went to DC, because we know that Monique um, and her husband had, you know, some history on television and that was explosive. And people were really, I think, disappointed that she wasn't on the show that she was on before. I was one of those like, well, that's not fair. It just didn't seem right. But can I tell you, Monique is much more at home on Love and Marriage. <laughs> DC, she it feels just like a better fit. Yes. Did you know that? Did you did you see her on the other show and think this would be a better format for her? Yeah, so I told Monique this. I was a I didn't like season one of that show. I I, yeah. I just thought it wasn't real. And then second season came about and Monique, of course, started to be a part of the second season. And I thought she was a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. And when Monique's on camera, she's so present. Yeah that she's engaged and she's, she's beautiful to look at. Mm -hmm. She She's funny and she she's real, she's serious. She's like, wait, she's nosy. So she's like, wait, what's happening? I need to know what, 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 So over the course of her being on that show, I never felt that we saw the full picture of her. Yeah. And I never felt that we saw the full picture of Chris because that show isn't about their relationship. It's about the friendships with the women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when she left the show, I reached out to her. We became um, friends. And when the opportunity arose to franchise Love and Marriage, I wanted to start in D.C. to give her an opportunity to come back on television, but to also give her fans an opportunity to see something different. Yeah. And again, I give her and Chris all the props in the world for showing people that they were not at that time in the best place in their marriage. Mm -hmm. And again, there's people who say, Monique nags all the time, all she does complain, you got this rich man and you drive a Rolls Royce and a Bentley mm -hmm. and you got all these fashions in your closet. But the fact that most women who are in Monique's position, they would say, girl, I spent his money, so I don't care. He can yeah. do what he wanna do, I'm gonna stay quiet. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't understand why women are having a problem with her voicing her concern because to me if she did not love this man or care about him she wouldn't be so invested in making sure he changes and lives up to the expectations of what their vows represented mm -hmm. so she's a tough cookie she's dealing with it and we just take the reunion and she addresses it oh i can't and, wait to see that yeah and and i'm with you crystal she fits so beautifully yeah. Oh, she does. Yeah, it just it just feels the the friend. I think it's the even when you talk about the relationships, I like seeing the couples. I think that our community we need to see the reality of family, right? Whether whatever that looks like, 
it's not realistic to think that people have these relationships and their families are not a part of that. So I love the family, but then I also think the friendships between the ladies, the friendships, the frenemies and all that, it just feels like a better fit for her here. Now, I, I mentioned that, you know, I feel like you have the, the, you have the, like the prototype of how this works. I remember hearing Mona Scott say years ago that the, the only thing that she requires is that you have a story and that you're willing to tell your story. What are, what are you looking for specifically? I get it that, you know, they have to be someone that the audience would connect to and there's got to be some meat there. But what do you think audiences want to see? What are, what type of women or what type of men do you feel like other people want to connect to and want to root for? What is that? What is that ingredient that makes it like, OK, I connect with her? Yeah. For me, my DNA will always be the black professional. I think that's what people want to see. I think people want to be inspired mm -hmm. by um, reality stars who are on television. I think that's the first step. Like you want to see a professional, a college educated or well educated or girl educated in these streets. Because, mm -hmm. honey, there's tons of education. <laughs> I think at the forefront is professional. Like I have a job, I have a career, I'm hustling, I'm making money. I'm, I'm going making somewhere, money. I'm doing something, right? I'm doing something. So you start there, you're like, okay, I I'm into it. Let's see how mm -hmm. you're working. And I think after that, Mona's right. They need to have a story to tell mm -hmm. because, listen, you can be as perfect looking as Beyonce knows, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you also want to know what she's going through in her household. Yeah. You want to know, like, girl, what's really happening in the clothes <laughs> of this child? Yeah. Right? yeah. So you're intrigued by her talent, you're intrigued by her beauty. But you want to know more and you're begging for more so that you can feel like, oh, girl, I feel you, sis. I'm rooting for you. Yeah. So you do need to have a story to tell because there's tons of people who I meet with who are like, put me on TV, put me on TV. And it's not about how good you look or how much money you have. That's, that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. It really is about if you are a professional and if you have something really personal that I feel like, ooh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> Or, or that's really dynamic. Mm -hmm. That that that's my specialty, and that's the reason why. If you look at my um, catalog of shows, you will see at the forefront. I work with black professionals. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I and I agree. That is what that is. I think one of the things that set Love and Marriage Huntsville apart because you had these couples, but there was this underlying theme of entrepreneurship and black excellence and that you know even though they're having problems they really are trying to leave a legacy and you can you know you feel that because we're all trying to do that so i want to do a little pivot here i'm going to talk about this nightcap because you hosted that reunion and i was like oh my god this is the most entertaining reunion i've ever seen so we were we were hyped up ready. we were primed and ready for the nightcap. So I want to play this little clip from the nightcap and then let's talk about how you get your cast to tell to spill all their tea with you again after they spill it on the show. They come on the show with you and spill even more. Sip on some tea and throw some shade. In DC, there was this big question of the hour. Is y'all sex life that bad? Take a look. We was talking about the romance, bring the romance back in the relationship. Yeah. She mentioned that she knew a sex therapist. Yeah, she talking about this at the table in front of all these people. You used to do foreplay, romance, you don't all that. Me. When she I want that. You know that, right? She shuts me down. She liked it plenty. You were younger years. back then. I still you did it. a little bit more with your tongue. <laughs> Do you think um, Arena and Jamie needs help in their sex life? Clearly, they, at least they're not on the same page. Well, speaking of sex, you're abstinent, right? Once I divorced, I went back to being abstinent. Now I did have a little fun in there, and then I went back to being abstinent. So before I met Kevin and married him, we were abstinent. We did not kiss until we got engaged. Oh wow! Let's talk about what you've been seeing. Okay. <laughs> First of all, do you believe that, Carlos? <laughs> Well, look, what did I say to you? 
I like to bring people on television who have a story to tell that's very unique and interesting that you've never seen before. <laughs> I, in my lifetime, have never heard of anyone. I've heard of people saving themselves from marriage. I've heard that, right? right? Honey, I never heard of anybody saving themselves for an engagement. So when she said we didn't kiss until we got engaged, I'm like, how would you know if you guys are compatible, at least like romantic? Oh, yeah. Chemistry. Maybe. I don't know about that one, Carlos. I was a little, I question, I question that. Maybe Me with a lot of people. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. But you got you have you have couples, professional people talking about their sex lives. <laughs> And I mean, and that is a very, that's often a very uncomfortable conversation for couples to have even with each other. So to have it with each other and then to share it with the world and then to come back and share it again with you. What are you doing to these people? <laughs> no, this is what it is, Crystal. Listen, I'm a trained journalist. I went to college for journalism and I'm like everyone's best friend. I've always been, and this is a true story. Ever since middle school, mm -hmm. I've always been the guy that people told their business to. Yeah. yeah. And they always said to me, like, I just feel comfortable talking to you because I know you're not judging me. Mm -hmm. And they said, you really ask good questions <laughs> that we want to tell you the truth. So I had that ability, Crystal, at the age of like 11. <laughs> and 30 years later, I still do it. And what's funny is it goes to show you the the trust and the camaraderie that I have in my cast. And I think that's super important yeah. when you're in my position that at the end of the day, you could tell that they love me. And you and you can tell that I'm a, I'm a super fan of theirs too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can see that because I when I watched the Love and Marriage Huntsville reunion, which was the first one that you did, it was explosive. But there was, I was glad that you did it because I don't think anyone else would have and there was a very it was a lot of very sensitive topics, especially with Melody and Martel and their fallout after the divorce. I don't think anyone else would have been able to really get where what you were able to get from the cast, all of them, you know, yeah. because there is that personal intimate relationship there. No, so, thank you for noticing that. And again, I think people seeing that they were like, Oh, we gotta do this late night show. Like yeah. People love Carlos and they love that he's nosy. <laughs> they, <laughs> but they also know that they have this, um, like I said, this chemistry. It's it's very interesting. When I say to you, Crystal, I'm having the time of my life taping the yeah. show. You can tell. Is there anyone? Um, because we know you've you've had quite a few housewives. You had you had this, a, a housewife reunion. We know you've worked with them early on. Is there anyone? in that franchise or any, or even just on television period, celebrity period that you would love to work with that you think would be, or what you think would be great TV period. Maybe not on one of your shows, but you just think that person would make for great TV. I would love to work with Lori Harvey. Ah, yeah. That's a pretty yeah. picture that we don't, we don't know what's behind, what's going on. What's yeah. happening behind that. Black professional, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she has a story to tell. Yeah. So she's number one on my list. I like that. We're gonna put that in the universe, and 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 I'm I'm tuned in when that happens, Carlos. I'm tuned in first first seat at the reunion. I'm right yes. there. I am right there. I saw that you were asked about about Candy Burris, and that there was there were people thinking that maybe you thought she did not make for great TV. Do you think there are any people that are on? People TV? think that. That was that I saw that before I jumped on here, and I thought, what you know, what let me just ask. Yeah, I you. never said never. Yeah, that's crazy. I never said anything like that. That's crazy. Well, you know what? We we came to the horses. We checked it out with you, and we got the answer. That's not the case. Is there are there people? Are there reality shows? And you don't have to name any that you think are not because some shows are drama based, right? Yes. And your shows have a lot of drama, but there's also a lot of substance that totally. kind of balances that out. Do you think that we have gotten to a point, and I think things are changing a little bit because the landscape of TV has changed a bit, but do you think that there were reality shows that don't really have that balance? I know that a lot of the shows on Zeus have got a lot of um, kind of bad rep or, or you know just bad feedback on people feeling like there's not 
a good balance? Do you think there needs to be a balance of drama and substance? Or do you think that there are some shows that it's fine if it's just, you know, it's a lot of it's just drama? You know, listen, this is how I honestly feel. I feel like when you think of different genres of television and music, mm -hmm. um, there's always something for somebody, yeah. right? When I think of, let's just say music, for example, you have hip hop, trap, pop, country, mm -hmm. R&B, like there's something for everybody. And one thing that I make sure is that I do what I feel is natural for me and what I wanna watch. Okay. I don't find it interesting to see a show where every episode someone's having a physical fight in every single episode. Right. That's not for me anymore. I used to watch Bad Girls Club back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that show had no personal story. It was really like, you got a bunch of bad girls in the house, they're going to fight. Right. Ding, ding, <laughs> ding. It's a bell ringing every ding, ding, ding. It's just ding, ding, ding. Yeah. And listen, back in my 20s and early 30s, I was watching like this. Like, this is the <laughs> best thing in the world. I love it. Yeah. But again, I was in my early 30s, and there were people at that time, the Bad Girls Club was on, there were people in their 40s who, who loved to watch Atlanta Housewives. Yeah. And then there were people in their 40s who were watching other programs. Mm -hmm. So I'm never one to say, you can't provide this for someone. Mm -hmm. I feel like, listen, we're, and when I say we, I mean television and content creators. We're creating and producing shows for an audience. Mm -hmm. I know my audience. Right. And I produce shows for them. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about what this person is doing mm -hmm. because no shade, let's be real here. They also have an audience too. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why you really see it. So I'm never one to campaign for like, you shouldn't do that. You should yeah. show more of us in a certain light. Mm -hmm. I feel like for me, I created my production company, Kingdom Rank Entertainment, because I wanted to show something else. And there's people who still look at my shows like, oh my God. I mean, yeah. You I was going to ask you do, you, do you feel a responsibility? Because I think and when I say our community, I mean African-American or Black community. Yeah there's a conversation that says, you know, if you have a platform, we should be trying to at least do something positive and be positive because, you know, you, you're in a very influential, you have a very influential position, right? So do you feel a responsibility to show positivity that can be seen as something uplifting the community? Or do you think entertainment should be clearly entertainment? I think the answer to that question is yes to both. Right. But I definitely think it lies on the individual doing what they feel is natural for them. Mm -hmm. For me, as Carlos King, mm -hmm. I prefer, like I said, multiple times before you ask that question, I like black professionals. That's but that's me. And, and, and that's something that I want to show to the world. Mm -hmm. And I want to show that so that in the midst of the trials and tribulations of their personal lives, at least you're rooting for them uh, professionally. Yeah. You know, that, but that's my responsibility to be authentic to me and mm -hmm. what I want to show in the world. But I'll be very honest with you. I don't judge or look sideways mm -hmm. at those in my same field mm -hmm. who go the other route. Yeah. You know, because I feel like if that's what works for you and that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. and you have an outlet to express your creativity. Mm -hmm. Do not want that person has responsibility to show less fights. I don't think that's their responsibility. But I think at the end of the day, you have to be able to, and I'm going to be real with this, you have to be able to not only sleep at night with your decisions, you have to be able to ride through with it and, and come with the consequences of your decisions. Right. And that's why when you think about some of these other programs where it's like this all of the time, and then you see people saying, I'm in the hospital, I'm about to sue you. <laughs> yeah. I don't, listen, I don't want none of those, those parts. I, <laughs> I like working with people where you saw the nightcap. We can talk about sex at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And, and we can laugh at it and build yeah. like, Carlos, we love you. I'll see you next week. Yeah. But, but I want to do that. But I want to make it very clear that I have a personal responsibility to make sure that 
Um, I'm doing what's authentic for me and what happens to be authentic for me. Mm -hmm. I like working with black professionals. Yeah. If you saw, this is, this is the last question in this, in this vein, but if you saw one of your cast members kind of self-destructing, right? Would you, do you feel like it is your responsibility? I'll go back to that word as the producer and the person that brought them into this situation to kind of shield them from themselves because if you can you make a mistake in life that's one thing you make a mistake on national television that could have different a different um outcome right mm -hmm. so do you, do you feel do you kind of feel your see yourself as like responsible for the careers of the people that you bring under your uh your company and your production company yeah, no, I feel like I'm their parent. That's Even right. though That's they're right. older than me. <laughs> you know, I, I'm i very, um, I'm very concerned about my entire mm -hmm. cast and mm -hmm. staff members. And because at the end of the day, I do feel a responsibility, responsibility to make sure that they're okay. Yeah. And there's several occasions Mm -hmm. of me making phone calls like <laughs> you need to chill yeah. or you may want to rethink this honey yeah you know i do that constantly yeah um because yeah i feel responsible for them they're a part of my you know my life yeah you know, i'm never gonna say well that's your decision girl you want to like drink yourself too I, I, that's oh that's 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 yeah. not my spirit yeah I'm, I'm not here to take advantage of people and mm -hmm. I'm not here to watch people self-destruct for entertainment. Right. So they're not, they're not, you're not exploiting. Cause that is the feeling I think people get with some production companies is they feel like the talent is exploited. And the yeah. fact that your talent, you can tell there's a natural relationship that isn't the, isn't the vibe that we get, but I wanted to ask your opinion on yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm glad you did. And it's funny when you watch the reunion, um, I think it was part three reunion. And yeah, it was part three reunion. We, we, we were about to wrap things up and the cast were joking. We, we, we've been shooting for almost 10 hours. And they said, Carlos, who's your favorite? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't have a favorite. And they said, it's Martel. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, why Martel? And they said, cause you caught him the most. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always oh, like, <laughs> Now that is true. Cause I'm always like, Hey, Martel. Are you okay? <laughs> you can talk. So again, that's just an example of, I really do take time to talk to them off camera. Yeah. To make sure that everyone's okay. I love that. I love that. Well, I'm excited. I, I want to know what you are most excited about. You have, um, Love and Marriage Huntsville is just a machine that continues to go. DC is is quickly becoming a favorite as well. And then I'm actually really excited about the Bell Collective because I just like those Southern girls because they were so, I love the fact that you are doing things that are different than what everyone expects. Like, yes. you know, it's, I, I don't know what, I didn't even know what was going on in Mississippi. I, I would never have thought about that till till that show. And then you see these women and they're dealing with the same thing. So I love the idea that it's something very different, but it's still us, you know, and it's just in a, yeah. in a city that's not overly um, exposed, you know? So what are you most looking forward to for the remainder of 2022 with your, with all your shows? Ooh, yeah, <laughs> no, to continue the love and marriage train, you know, is, is a blessing to be a black man who created a franchise. That's mm -hmm. always been my dream. So to do that has been, you know, nothing short of God's blessing and favor on my life. So continue to do that. Um, looking forward to people watching Bell Collective and hosting that reunion because that's going to be fun. <laughs> and more episodes of the Nightcap with Carlos King and just getting more into people's business. <laughs> <laughs> Does your dog? Does your dog like the show? I was like, is you, he really enjoying himself? Because you know, sometimes you never know what your pet is going to do. No, she is a diva, and what's funny is she is she likes to be in her own space. She's she's a Gemini. Okay, so she she could be a bit moody, right? You don't know what you're gonna get. So she likes to like she'll come out and she like let me go and she just runs off to the audience and like doesn't want to sit by me anymore um so that's been fun 
But no, I'm looking forward to the world seeing more of her. You know, my podcast, Reality with the King, is doing very well. So, yes. you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm in this place where I'm able to just speak to my people and speak to my audience and make it have like that access to me. And they really, they really love it. And I, and I gotta be honest with you, Crystal, I, I, I love being there for them and engaging with them. Yeah, it's great seeing the, seeing your conversations because we know that you know the backstory and then seeing you being able to kind of pull that out is really cool. I'm so happy for you. I've been able to watch your career. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Um, my last question is what do you, what is your what is your personal opinion? This is just a opinion question. Uh Queen B has released her first single. What are you are you are you dancing? Are you feeling it? Are you <laughs> I played that all day yesterday. Oh. <laughs> I was on conference call singing it in my head. I love it. The Queen is back. I'm a huge fan of her. She's Oh, she's the ultimate diva to me, and I love her so much. Uh, but no, I'm I'm into it. Break my soul and release the trade, honey. Yes. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much, Carlos King. I look forward to checking in with you as we get ready to premiere Bell Collective. And of course, after this, I will definitely be tap hitting you up after this uh, married uh, married love and marriage DC reunion. I cannot wait. Girl, you're going to love it. I promise you that, boo. I cannot wait. Thank you so much, Carlos. All right. Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> Bye. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. That is the brains behind all these shows that we love talking about. I cannot wait for that uh, Love and Marriage DC reunion because we've got to talk to... Actually, we have Monique is going to be on next week, so we'll be able to get a little tea from her, but there's so much more coming. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Let me know what you think about this conversation with Carlos King, and hopefully... We will have heard it first. I look forward to a potential show with him and Lori Harvey. I think that would be super dope. So stay tuned. Let us know what you think. And I will see you guys right here on Rolling Out Reality Check next week.